Hello and welcome to the Iron Ball Podcast, where we share tips, tricks and insights into all things hair and grooming. Today's episode, we're going to be looking at the psychology of hair and exploring the connection between hairstyles and self-confidence. So sit back, grab a drink and let's dive in. So let's talk about the psychology of hair. And let's talk about um, how that affects people's self-confidence and affects their self-esteem. So the power of a transformation. How do you feel when you've had a haircut? Great. Cool. Next topic. (laughs) (laughs) One word answers. That's it. Fucking good. (laughs) Great. Cool. We'll move on. I feel great. (laughs) How do you feel when you've had a haircut? A lot better. Do you feel more confident? Do you feel... Do you feel better? Do you feel like? Do you feel like people would look you at you differently? More, yeah, like confident in yourself, and it's like we said before, like you feel confident and better for doing other things as well. Mm. So when you've left the when you've left the hairdressers in Wollstone, and you've gone, <laughs> <laughs> and you've gone, ah, oh, you catch yourself in like your reflection in a shop window how does that make you feel a million tears (laughs) (laughs) so i could not get my hair done in (laughs) wolfstown where do you get your hair done bedford place okay so when you've left the hairdressers in bedford no i do feel good and you catch yourself in the mirror in the the shop window no it's good makes you feel a lot better more Mm. confident just happier in general yeah Yeah. which is a good thing yeah no, it's good. I mean, there's not loads to say about that, is there? Really? No, it's, it's only, I haven't had my hair done for a while, so I can't get too excited. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to have it done? Because you, are you going to get no. the roots done in no. the end? No. I'm going to grow out. Oh, no, because you're going, it. you're going like... Bronze. Natural. Bronze. I'm going to call it bronze. <laughs> bronze. Blonde at the bottom. So there you go. <laughs> so, so if you're it's going, if you're ever going to your hairdressers and you need, you need to say... Oh, I want my hair like Liv. It's bronze. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll go, okay, no problem. We know Someone exactly paid what to have their is. hair look like this, so I'd want a fucking <laughs> refund. <laughs> Sorry, Emma, but it's not been done in a while. <laughs> just in case she sees this, I don't want to offend her. Oh, yeah, that's a point. <laughs> yeah, I know, I just realised. She, watch, she might, she might she watch might you do. on the YouTube and then be like... <gasps> She's taking the piss Can't out of my hair. That's next appointment. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be paying double. Oh, God. So we're going, oh, we've, we're um, going to charge you more because you've been taking the piss out of us on the were internet. A bitch on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so the other thing about getting a haircut is um, how you can express your personal identity. Now, you're choosing to express your personal identity and now identifying as Brond. <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> i will be so so um how did you come by that how did you decide you wake up in the morning and go i like being brown and i like being blonde <laughs> i'm gonna be bronze. so we're gonna go bronze. i was just killing my hair with bleach oh okay so, so I was you're killing it off so you're i need it to, to like, be healthier you're trying to revitalize your hair and make it yeah yeah Make it more alive than just yeah. straw. Do you feel that bronze matches your personality more? I don't know than yet. Being blonde At or the brown? moment, it's not quite bronze, it's just grown out roots. <laughs> 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 so when I get close to that point, I'll let you know. Because right now, it's the not a good time. I'm excited for it's it. It's not a good I'm stage. excited to see. I'm excited to see when, when this goes viral and all of the people on the internet start going to the hairdressers and going I need to go bronze and it's then you're going to see loads of people walking past it's a thing it's like that cowboy copper have you seen that yeah no. what's that cowboy copper cowboy Colors copper amazing and bronze what's cowboy it's copper thing. it's like you is that it's yours hair? yeah <laughs> is yours cowboy cop- copper I just copy Hayley Williams every yeah opportunity. Uh, is Hayley cowboy Williams cowboy copper, cowboy copper? Oh. it's like that brownie sort of like Albany coppery don't know what it's got to do with cowboys, but... Yeah, what has it got to copper. do with cowboys? 
<laughs> Georgia doesn't mind what it is. It's got cowboy in the name. She's there. <laughs> she thought I'm having it. <laughs> She's into it. Cowboy copper. Okay. Cowboy I mean, I don't think it's gonna. Bond. I don't think it's gonna catch on much in the in the short hair game because no, it's just a waste of time getting your hair done and like coloured when it's short. It's a pain in the ass. So the other thing that it was that we were saying in the blog post um, about um, about the psychology of hair is the boost in self esteem, and I think that was really. I think a lot of people noticed that a lot more after COVID, when they come out and then they were like getting haircuts and they realized they they felt better. They they felt better about themselves. Oh, definitely. Um, and they def- people were definitely having a self-esteem boost. And from what people said, they tried something new, which they ended up liking as well. Like gave yeah. them the confidence to try different things. Where it got so long, they wouldn't normally leave it. That that's long. true. So many people have said that, that they just tried something different and have now stuck with that. Yeah, that's really true. Because there were a lot of people that were like getting different haircuts, like longer styles um, and trying new things coming out of lockdown. Which was quite interesting. Yeah, but yeah. Crazy. So boosting self esteem. That's very thing. good. Yeah. Well that so Georgia has just given us a bit of a bit she of helped us out. an insight <laughs> into into psychology of hair. <laughs> and we're saying about how you how people used hair, clothes, fashion to kind of find their their group and and their people and what kind of subculture they they belong to you've had that all the way through as well you know like even i don't really know when i was when i was younger i did go through a skinhead phase so when you turn up to a scar gig or or a scar punk gig or something like that most of the people there all have skinheads and they're all you know everyone everyone looks the same um and you kind of feel like you fit in then um which is quite interesting. It makes you feel Did more you ever comfortable have in situations. Did you ever like have a subculture that you kind of identified with? Oh, everyone had like bleached white hair, big back combed hair. That's about as close as it got. Yeah. Everyone at school, it was either like that bleach blonde or like jet black, box dye, big huge fringe. Mm. It was vile. I don't support <laughs> it now. <laughs> it was horrific. <laughs> Yeah, but that's about as close. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you can use your hair to to help you identify with a certain group of people, which is very interesting. Um, I mean, I don't know how much that that applies today. I don't know if there's many groups of people nowadays that. I think a lot of younger people get hairstyles because of their friends. Do you know what I mean? Like different yeah. things. If they'll fit into a group, if one of their mates has had it and they haven't had it, they'll try it. And then you, as they get older, you notice they'll do something completely different where you know they're making their own choices. And hmm. I don't know, not for everyone, but for a lot of people, you sort of slowly notice they go and change the way they are. Yeah. As they sort of find themselves and change that. Yeah, I suppose that's quite true because you get a lot of people that come in and they want to fit in with the rest of their friends. So they all yeah. get a similar haircut or a similar style of haircut. So. What's next? The next bit was uh, just finding a skilled barber. Finding a skilled barber, um, I mean, that's going to affect your mental health and your well-being because then, like, I think one of the things that people find when they go to different barbers is they feel the anxiety. Have people spoken yeah. to you about that when they've come to you or they've, or they've gone somewhere else? Yeah, they have, like, and said different things that, and I like it because the people will say it before you even start, so they make you aware of situations they've had before. Yeah. Which, obviously, to them, they see it as, I'm making sure this isn't going to happen again, but it sort of helps because you're like, right, I know what you didn't like, I know what you don't like. And by that point, if it's something I can't do in my ability, I I will tell them before we start, and I like that. And you feel like people come back to you um, because they know... They're going to yeah. get what they want then. And I feel like part of it is like you shouldn't... When I first started, I was like, I feel like it's bad if I turn and go, I can't do that. But not everyone can do everything. At such, I mean, you slowly learn yeah. certain things and things. So I was like, I've learned it over time. But just don't... If you can't do it, say you can't. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, 
There's but like when people and things and when people have gone elsewhere and then they come and then they come here for example and then they go oh yeah i had i had a really bad cut um or whatever um and then yeah. they find like the, i think they find like they've got anxieties about going elsewhere because then they're like oh we'll go to another shop but by going to another shop then you've got that anxiety is it going to be as good yeah um are they going to do what i want and are you going to keep having that anxiety until you find the place that you want you to go? Keep so I mean, explaining yourself to every different barber just to end up yeah. in different situations. Yeah, exactly. That's so you end up getting to one barber and staying with one barber, and then you don't have to worry about those anxieties. So then that also yeah. helps with psychology and mental health and your well-being because you're not having to worry about the anxiety of going somewhere else, or you're not having to worry about the anxiety of your next haircut, whether that's going to be. Yeah. whether that's going to make you anxious or make you kind of worried about about it so it shouldn't be something you have to worry about shouldn't it should be, something be relaxing you, have to worry about. you just know you're going to come out and feel better yeah which is how it, every single person feels that has been to the shop yeah which is nice when they're like it's right i'll be back do you know like i feel calm now rather than anxious yeah. and having to over explain themselves to make sure they're not going to feel like crap when they leave again absolutely which is good that's all for today's episode of the iron ball podcast thanks for watching be sure to subscribe to our channel for more expert advice and insights on all things grooming until next time take care of yourself and your hair was that all right that was very good right fucking sick <laughs> that makes up that balances out fucking Ooh. sick fucking <laughs> that fucking balances sick. out the have a drink bit so <laughs> relax <laughs> willy level Relax and that's fucking sick. Relax. <laughs> and then. Okay, that's a wrap on that one then. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs>